All right, folks, on this Garlic Market Show, we're going to talk about cold calling. It is probably one of the most valuable things right now if it's done right. I've got Nancy Calabrese from One of Kind Sales who does it right. Nancy, say hi. Hello, everyone. Nancy was afraid of sales, but eventually she got into it at 25 years of recruiting, recruiting experience. One company set up 300 appointments in a year. We're going to talk about how Nancy builds a dedicated sales team, why that's important how she hires them, her secret sauce to hiring and training a great person, a great salesperson. The first two questions she asks in it, the character interview, because this is all important. We're going to talk about her magic of the outbound sales approach, the metrics for the sales team, uh, the lies that you need thousands of leads, and the idea of phone networking through outbound call calls and getting people to remember you all on this garlic marketing show. But of course, this is brought to you by videocasestory.com. One of the things Nancy will talk about is that your team needs a case story. So video case story will help interview your clients, collect them, craft them, strategize them, find you a hundred places to use your customer stories to close more deal, close more sales. Go to videocasestory.com to learn more. All right, let's get started. I want to bring her back on because I think the idea of outbound sales and sales follow-up and people calling is so crucial. It's becoming more important than ever, especially yep. now that we're not in front of people. And I want to talk about this process of doing this and building a relationship through this, not just grinding the phones. So before we get into that, Nancy, let's just talk about a little bit about your company and your background. Sure. My company is one of a kind sales and uh, we we help people do something that they hate doing. We actually love cold calling. And we know just based on experience that it works. So we often work with business professionals that are just frustrated. They don't have enough qualified leads in their pipeline, or they are annoyed. They have a sales team and the sales team will hide behind social media and email and refuse mm. to pick up the phone. So we come in as their inside sales engine. And we do everything from data management, crafting the scripts, executing the call campaign. And our tagline is, we love cold calling so our clients don't have to do it. Yeah, and I think that's a great point. I've seen this so much where sales teams all of a sudden are email and social media experts and they want to be marketers. I'm like, that's not your job. Your job is to talk to people, right? Right. You know what I can't get uh, is it's just a conversation. And social media and emails does not give you a sense of that person's form of communication. Human conversation will never go away, ever go away. Mm -hmm. I think it trumps everything else that we're doing. And especially nowadays, Ian, think about it. You want to stand out, pick up the phone because your competition is not doing that. No. I mean, the only people that are, are cold calling me are warranty people, but no, no other businesses are. And, you know, and it's, it's such a simple thing to do, but it's not necessarily an easy thing to do. And I want to talk a little bit about that, but tell me about your background on getting into this. Cause I think it's interesting. It's not, this isn't your first year doing this. No, is it? no. Um, <laughs> as a young person, I was always told I should go into sales and I was afraid. And then when I finally hit 30, I said, you know, I'm done. Um, I was in corporate Fortune 50, and I felt like I had a noose around my uh, neck. And um, I took the leap, and I became a headhunter. And I happened to specialize in the insurance industry. I figured niche is rich. And I did that for a couple of years. And I remember my uncle, who is my wonderful mentor, finally said to me, because I always moan, they say, hey, they make you do it this way, that way. I think this is a better way. And he goes, Nancy, did you ever think you don't like people telling you what to do? And I said, yes. <laughs> so I went it out on my own. And I owned the recruiting firm for about a uh, oh, long time, 25 years. Wow. And yeah, a long time. And in the last few years, uh, we placed a lot of people with this uh, regional insurance brokerage, and they had nine salespeople. None of them would pick up the phone, and they hired my team to uh, set appointments for the producers. And we had two and a half people doing it. We set 300 appointments in the wow. first year. And so when we wrapped up that project, I said, oh my goodness. 
we have skills that the marketplace really needs. And I sold that business and I created one of a kind sales in 2011. And uh, we're still here going strong. We love what we do. And you know what's really amazing? I have the most dedicated, loyal team, and they're all over the world. They all have great accents. But think about it. They're in a no business. They get no, no, no every day. So we do a, a good job within the company, first attracting the right people for our culture, but also um, instilling fun because we you have to have fun. You know, oh, yeah. no matter what you do in business, you should enjoy it. So that's kind of my story. That's great. And, uh, you know, I want to get into the keys to a great outbound sales campaign and how you do the cold calling. But man, it's interesting to me because building a sales team is so hard. Mm -hmm. And then you're building a cold calling team, which is a whole nother layer of hard because it's not an easy job. And like I said, it's a lot of, I mean, your job is rejection. What? How do you do it? You just realize, especially in this business, the no is not a personal no. And we take every no as a not now. So there's a misnomer. People think they have to have thousands and thousands of leads. And you know what? That's a total waste. You should have a targeted amount where you can have a repeatable process and continue to develop those relationships over time. Sometimes it takes years, you know, until the moment is right. And, you know, how do you keep a team motivated? As I said, you have to have fun. You post stu stupid GIFs. When everybody sets an appointment, we're on Microsoft Teams and you have these funky picture, uh, pictures, you know, it just works. You know, here's the other thing. I never thought I wanted to lead. I never thought I was a good leader. And now I realize I'm pretty darn good at it because my people don't leave. Why would anybody want to take a no all day long? But they do. Having a dedicated sales team means more than just not having churn, doesn't it? It means a better results. Nope. Yeah, and here's uh, what we infuse, and I am such a big believer in this, is continual training. Mm -hmm. um, as you probably remember, my team is Sandler trained every week including my admins, because the power of communication exists within business and also in your personal life. Um, and what we are taught is about DISC, the four forms of communication style, so that when I have, say, a first time meeting, I am better prepared mm -hmm. to speak to that person in their language you know, in the way in which they want to be heard. And it, it's just such a, a huge plus. My team can't get enough of it. Do you use that DISC method and, and do you use your sales methods when you're hiring too? Oh, absolutely. So when I hire, they have to go through a couple of hurdles. First thing, I obviously, um, I want their resume, but the second and third, we have a candidate information form that we ask them to complete. And I also send them a sample script and I want them to record the, the script. I wanna hear their voice because it's all about the voice. Hmm. If you can't speak clearly, you can't be a part of the team. And, and we use our voices deliberately to you know engage with someone. And you'd be shocked, Ian, as to how many people apply and they say they have tons of experience and they sound horrible. They just do. Most people come to our company trained in what we call features and benefits. Mm -hmm. So most salespeople have been trained in that. Hi, my name is Nancy Calabrese. This is my company. We do ABC and you're going to want to see us. So I can come in Tuesday or Thursday, which is better for you. <laughs> that to me is a total turnoff. And our approach is for, it's a discovery call. Yeah. First, are we speaking with the decision maker? Second, are they experiencing some of the pains that we know our customers can solve? And then 
we set the appointment from there. So I'm proud to say that many times my team is being recruited to join the companies that they're calling because they sound so good. That means you're hiring great people. You know, and I was just talking, uh, we just did an episode uh, with Noel over at JobRack and, you know, he does hiring and placement for agencies and for other marketers. And, and we talked about this. It's like, if your job isn't hiring these people, it, you, you just can't get good at it, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure over the years now, you've developed a skill of hiring and training these people, which is just as important as the outbound skill, isn't it? Yeah, but I, I forgot to add, we also have a recruiter that happens to be my business coach. She does an excellent job of a character interview. People should work for companies that have the same philosophy as their employer. Otherwise, it's not a good fit. And because since we started using uh, Laurel in the pre-screening process, I'm going to say about three years into it, maybe four years, uh, honestly, the quality of my team has radically improved. And believe me, we had some wild ones years ago, and I did make hiring mistakes. But when you do make a mistake, right? Um, the, the rule is to identify it and then move quickly and solve it because you don't want any bad seeds or I call it cancers on the team. It's so true. It's so true. And so you hire these amazing people. You train them. Tell me about what goes into training them to make sure that they are a great outbound sales team. Here's the magic behind our approach. It all starts with the script. The script is the same, except for the pain points. That will vary from customer to customer. So your pain points are gonna be different than my pain points, right? And yeah. all they have to do is memorize that script. And, you know, I've heard uh, opponents, oh, we never use a script, you know, it doesn't sound good. And I, I always say, well, gee, who's your favorite actor? And they give me a name. Uh-huh. So when so-and-so was playing in this movie, did he wing it? Oh, no, no. It starts with the script. So that is something we reinforce. And I really hold my people to keep the integrity of the script. Now, they may put some of their own words that sound more natural to them, but they have to keep the flow and the integrity. And it works. It just works. That's amazing. And, and so, you know, when you're looking at metrics for your team and you're judging them, what type of metrics are you looking for in your outbound sales? We look at, obviously, the amount of time they spend in each campaign, the dials per hour. We use a CRM that enables us to make approximately 20 dials per hour. Um, and I want my team to hit it or exceed it. It's important because, you know, here's the uh, another mistake I think a lot of salespeople make. They do a ton of research before they make a call or send an email. And guess what? You're going to go right into voicemail. That's the name of the game. Um, it takes eight to 12 touches from, um, from a, a salesperson for a C-suite to pay attention. So we really train in the art of not even having to be an expert on our, uh, for our clients. We, we shouldn't be because when they start asking buying questions, that's, gee, that's a great question, Ian. Why do you ask? I'm curious. Oh, okay. And then what we're trying to do is take that knife and stab it deeper and deeper <laughs> so that Ian gets emotional and we pivot to the appointment. Love it. And yeah. you never set an appointment for the sake of setting an appointment ever. Never. If they're not qualified, they're not qualified. You're better off learning that, right? It's true, but I mean, there's a, and that's why I want to have you on because this, there's so many appointment sending businesses out there that are just ramrodding appointments in. And I'm hearing that if they do get the appointment, they're even not good. And you just don't want that, right? You, you want, like you've said before, to build a relationship through this. Yeah. So how how do you go about doing that? Uh, build a relationship with the prospects? Yes. 
Uh, it's just simply our approach. So we ask permission. She is this iron garlic? Yes. Well, I and this is Nancy Calabrese. We don't know each other. That's a pattern interrupt. Or um, and then I say, um, you know, I'm looking for a little bit of help. I'm not 100% sure you're the person that can help me, but if you give me 30 seconds, I'll let you know why I'm calling and you tell me if it makes sense to continue. Everybody always says, okay. Or somebody, you know, a, a real buster will say, oh, I can give you 10. Okay, we'll do it in 10. Then, you know, you go into what we call 30 second commercial. So you describe what you do. Then you talk about the problems you solve. And we use emotional words when we, we have usually three bullets. Um, we use frustrated, angry, annoyed, disappoint, uh, disappointed, stressed. And then we pivot and we just simply say, you know, I, I don't want to pretend to know your business, but is any of this relevant and worth a conversation? And relationships are built because we sound very non-salesy. And we sound like if we don't get this deal, it's not going to change the quality of our life. That, I mean, that leads into such a, how important is that? Uh, because it, it's more than just saying the appointment, right? It's it's the appointment leads to something. How does that change the next stages? You know, the, the discovery call, the actual presentation. Yeah, well, on. you know, here, our livelihood is dependent on our client's ability to close. That's a reality, Right. If they're mm -hmm. not good closers, then um, it's not likely they're going to renew. But the way it helps is we kind of set the stage for our clients. We provide them with a data sheet that includes all the contact information, but also a needs assessment, what some of the hot buttons are to prepare the client for their first meeting. Uh, and then beyond that, when we meet with the client, we keep a running track of all of the appointments, the ones that are moving uh, forward, yay. Do you need help on any of the other ones? Should we put them back in the call queue? So we really try to keep being sticky by offering them support. And finally, I think the one of the greatest add-on values is the fact that we are sales trained. So mm -hmm. that kind of comes across in our discussions with the client. And how does this fit into another business's marketing mix? How are you fitting into the marketing mix? Well, this is just a channel in marketing. I mean, I'm mm -hmm. not saying you only do this. You need yep. to do what we do here, pick up the phone. Uh, I call it phone networking, right? Right. You need to continue to go face-to-face -face networking if it's possible or Zoom networking. You need to uh, have either a blog or some outbound marketing effort, right, via communication so your audience can find you. We're big in LinkedIn, posting information on LinkedIn. And, and I have my podcast, like you have your podcast, and it, and, and, Joining some strategic groups really does help. When I think about, you know, what is happening nowadays, um, I get a lot of referrals as, you know, my business is mature and, and that's the way it should be. And you want to have a mix of referrals, cold calls, appointments, you know, and so on. Yeah, it's, it's sure you need all of it, but that I feel like that, that outbound really just really helps set you apart because you can spend 20, 30, 40, $50,000 a month on, on ads, but you really are bringing a human element to it, aren't you? I would never spend that kind of money on ads ever. <laughs> and even when I was a headhunter and I had my own business, we never advertised. It was always picking up the phone. And, and because when you're persistent and you're friendly enough, they remember you. Mm -hmm. you know, hey, remember me? Oh my God, it's Calabrese again. How you been? You know, and they think of you for their friends or their colleagues. And with, you know, I mean, I get a thousand phone calls a day that aren't relevant to me. And if I don't see the, you know, the caller ID and, and don't know it, I generally don't pick up. How do you overcome that? 
all my calls go into voicemail. Okay. <laughs> and that's the way I play it. I listen to the message or, you know, we've got the, um, I read the message and determine which ones I'm going to call back. You know, we we brought this up. That's interesting. We brought this up at Sandler today. Like, how do you deal with voice messages and so on? We like to create a bit of curiosity in our messages. We don't do um, features and benefit dump, right? Mm -hmm. We want to get them intrigued enough to call back. Um, one of the uh, ways we do it, you know, one of the messages is, you know, gee, your name came up in a conversation recently, motivated me to give you a call. Here's my number. Nothing urgent, but call me back. And um, we sometimes have gotten pushback. Well, who told you to call me? So <laughs> I let my team know, always say Nancy Calabrese. I don't know how she gave me your name. And then you just move on. You just move on. And so, Nancy, tell us a little bit more about, you know, working with you. What types of industries have you worked in? What types of industries do you work in? And uh, what's the process of working with you? Yeah, um, we're industry agnostic. We primarily work in the B2B space, but we also can work in the consumer space uh, if our client provides us with the leads because of the do not call laws. Insurance is a vertical because I came out of insurance placement and recruitment. But we work with financial advisors, insurance aggregators, uh, franchises, accounting firms, real estate, commercial real estate firms, uh, sales trainers and coaches. You know, we're all across the board. And I love that mix because it makes it interesting. You know, yeah. um, you learn about so many different businesses, the printing business, you know, I just think back on all the years we did. Um, oh, we had a wonderful campaign with this group that um, created symposiums for gifted high school students that were going in the science field, science and medical fields. We loved it. It was just so different, you know, and we would actually, in that case, we would sell the program for the client. Tell me about like getting started with you. Oh, sure. So when we close a deal, obviously the service agreement is signed and the authorizations have gone through. We set up an onboarding meeting and first meeting, we're going to have the client describe the, uh, the scope of the campaign and we record it because we use it as a training tool. And in the first two weeks, there are some homework assignments, but for the most part, um, we have a lot of sample documents that our clients can use to help create the scripts. The key um, element of their participation is to give us three to five pain points and the backstory is, or the case studies behind each one. Once we get that done, we just start the campaign. And beginning the second week is when we meet with the client we have workbooks that are sent every week and also a, a dashboard of key performance indicators. You know, you said what metrics, so the hours, the dials per hour, number of appointments, and so on. Um, and we really make an effort to be visible. And here's another thing, and you know this, if you screw up, you got to own it. You got to own it. Just you're a human being. And you never want them to point out you screwed up. It doesn't happen often, but it does happen to everyone. Yeah, And that's pretty much it. And hopefully by the end of the term, they're going to be delighted enough to want to renew and keep renewing. Um, so this is fantastic. So we're going to put a link to one of a kind sales in the show notes. And uh, you spend a lot of time on LinkedIn. That's the best place to follow you. Yeah. Yeah. Please find me. And we'll put a link to uh, Nancy's. Uh, LinkedIn. It's Nancy Calabrese, C-A-L-A-B-R-E-S-E. -E. Uh, yep. We'll put a link to th that in there. And, yep. uh, you know, if you're considering, I mean, I really think everyone's, if you're in a B2B environment, everyone should consider an outbound sales team, someone to call, oh, someone to follow please up. Please do. You know, another thing, a fun fact, we have this video series and it's like a two minute or less, Nancy knows and sales tips and find them on LinkedIn. They're a fun listen. 
Awesome. We'll put a link to some of those as well. Well, Nancy, thank you so much for being on the Garlic Marketing Show. Oh, Ian, I do it again and again and again. You're so much fun. <laughs> thank you All for right. having me. Well, thanks for coming on and thank you very much for that. It was great. You know, folks, it, outbound sales is so important and it should be definitely in everyone's mix. And I see so many people are just leaving so much money on the table and building relationships is important. So Nancy, thank you again and make sure to check out Nancy. Follow her on LinkedIn at the very least. At the best, yep. give her a call. And uh, yeah, thank but you follow all for Ian. <laughs> Iron, guys <laughs> if, if you're not if you're watching my podcast and listening to my podcast and you're not following me on linkedin well then i don't like you anymore <laughs> don't worry about it <laughs> bye bye everyone it's been great bye and thank you all for taking nancy on your journey this has been ein garlic and the garlic marketing show